thank you, Jesus. Glory. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Hallelujah. Oh, come, let us adore him and give thanks to Almighty God, for he is worthy to be praised. Could you please stand in the house of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory be to God in the highest. And that earth peace, goodwill to all men. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah, let us lift up all the hands this morning. Hallelujah. And worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. For he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Eternal and most righteous, everlasting Father. We thank you again this morning for this privilege and for this opportunity. Mighty God, if it had not been for you this morning, none of us would have been here this morning. But because of your grace and your mercy that is extended towards us. And so, Father God, we just want to give you thanks. We just want to give you praise and lift up and adore your matchless name. We thank you for healing and delivering our souls soul from sin. We thank you, oh God, for what you have done for us this morning. And as we gather one more time into your presence, Father God, I pray that you will touch us afresh. Anoint us, God, with fresh oil this morning. I pray that the fire of God this morning will touch us, oh God, and let us be alive unto you this morning as we magnify and lift up your name. For great is your name and great Greatly to be praised. Anoint the musician. Anoint the choristers. Anoint the one that will be bringing the word this morning. And I pray that all things will be done, Father God, to your honor and to your glory. How great is our God. How great is his name. And he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the name of the Lord this morning. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah Amen. to the name of Jesus. We bless the name of Jesus. Come on, let us open our mouths. Hallelujah. And give him praise on this morning. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. We worship the King of Kings on this morning. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. I have a scripture to share with you. Luke 2 and 10 to 11 says, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. We shall be all be all to all people, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Hallelujah. I am happy for us this morning. You know why? Because we don't have to wait on a designated date, Amen. a day to celebrate oh, the birth of Jesus. He's alive and well. Because he lives this morning, we can say we can face tomorrow. So we don't have to wait on tomorrow to celebrate the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Do you believe that on this morning? Hallelujah. As believers, we get to celebrate the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Every day, all day. Hallelujah. And so we bless the name of Jesus. So, so this morning, we're here to tell you that joy is here. Peace is here. Emmanuel is here. The deliverer is here this morning. That is reason to celebrate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus. So join us in worship this morning as we give the Lord honor, as we give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, come, oh, come. 
to worship him hallelujah come on we have a reason to celebrate this morning he's holy holy forever hallelujah his name is the highest his name is the greatest come on people of God hallelujah hallelujah to the name of Jesus hallelujah generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lord. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lord. Your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry
if you've been redeemed, sing the song forever to the Lord. If you walk in freedom, and if you bear his name, sing the song forever to the Lamb. We'll sing a song forever. cry holy all creation cry holy you are lifted high holy holy forever sing hear your people hear your people
worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. Your name is above every other name this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah to your name, Jesus. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down the sea, you are worthy, Jesus. Glory. 
Matthew 2, from verse 1 to 15. I'll read while you're following. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king. Sorry, let me start again, please. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king. In, sorry, I'm so nervous. I'm so sorry. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen the star in the east, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king of heard these things, he was troubled on all Jerusalem with him. And when and when he had gathered all the chief priests and, of the, and the scribes of the people the, together, and the demand of, of them where Christ should be born. Then they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, in, in, Bethlehem, of Ju in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus says, it, is it is written that the, the prophet, that, 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 that Bethlehem, not, Bethlehem is, is the land, land of Judea, are God not least among the priests of Judea? When out of thee shall there come a governor that shall rule thy people Israel? Then Herod, when he had privately called his chief, I mean, privately called his wise men, and diligently where when the sun appeared, and they said unto them in Jude, in Bethlehem. Said, Go and search, search diligently for the young, young child, and, and when ye have found him, bring me word again 
that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. Lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, and they and to over with the child was. And they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they came unto the house, they found this young child with his mother, and went down and worshipped him. And when they have opened their treasure, they present unto, unto him this gold, frankincense, and more, and were be warned in the God in the dream that they should not return unto Herod, they depart into their own country by your way. And when they were built, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in the dream, saying, Arise and take your child at your gate into Egypt, and there you are there until I bring the word. So I yet will see to the child to destroy him. When they arose and take the young child and his mother by night, and depart into Egypt. And they went here to the end of the Herod. And it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord, by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. The end of poetry. That's it. That's it. 15 and last. You're in the Herod. It might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. By the prophet saying, All of Egypt have I called my son. This is the word of the Lord. We honored by saying, Amen. When Israel out of bondage came, I see before them lay. The Lord reached down his mighty hands and rolled the sea away. Please stand on your feet, Bronx, and give God some praise. I don't know about you, but God has kept me to this day. No matter what the trouble is, our God, our God, baby Jesus, baby Jesus, to the rescue. Let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. God is good. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you are visiting with us for the very first time, please remain standing. We would like to know how our first time visitors. Okay. Let's give them a warm Bronx to the welcome. Now, for those of you who are not yet members, but you are weekly visitors, welcome. For those of you who are on the various platform, I just want to welcome you to our service. And please, make Bronxwood, 3232 Lurton Avenue, your day of worship, one day very soon. On behalf of our, on behalf of our esteemed bishop and first lady, the Hallens, please... Welcome, our, welcome to our service again. Enjoy the ambience in the blessed Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We give thanks for our young Adam who is visiting with us today. And he stepped right in and doing his duty. Hallelujah. This is the second to last Sunday in the year 2023. We have made it thus far. Amen? We have made it thus far. Thanks be unto our God, the great Jehovah who have kept us. And I'm here this morning for a prayer for those who are in need. We know we have different needs. But God has been keeping us. And so when you come out here, whether you are sick, whether you are depressed, whether you are standing in, in the gap for someone else, whether you have financial need, whatever the need is this morning that you will be stepping forward for, I want you to step out on faith. 
believing that the Lord that has kept you throughout all the years, all the way down to the second to last Sunday in 2023, will answer your questions, will answer your need, will answer your prayers this morning. As you call out to him, it's not the person standing here praying. It's not any of us that can do it, but it is the Lord that you are believing in. It's the Lord that you are praying to. He says, step out on faith. Faith without works is dead. You have to come. He already gave his life. He already shed his blood. By his stripes, we were healed. By his stripes, we are healed. And so if you have a need this morning, I ask you to step out on faith, believing that the Lord Jesus Christ will comfort your heart, will heal your body, will deliver you, will, will comfort you and surround you constantly because he promised in his word that he will never leave you nor forsake you. So just step forward on faith, believing this morning that the great Jehovah of Abraham, the great Jehovah of Isaac, the great Jehovah of Moses is the same great Jehovah that is healing, that is delivering, that is moving this morning in this place in the name of Jesus. Step out on faith. Step out on faith. Step out on faith and know that God is moving, that God is doing the same work he did in the past. He will do it today in the name of Jesus. There is none uh -huh. like Jesus, remember those that are mourning this morning. Oh God, their hearts are.
are broken for their loved ones that are gone on before. Oh God, will you remind them, oh God, of the hope of the hope that they have in you, mighty God. The hope that makes us not ashamed in the name of Jesus. That we can look forward to seeing them if they have given their hearts unto you in the later, God, in the name of Jesus. That we all we have to do, God, is to live. Live a life that is pleasing before you and we can see each other again in the name of Jesus. Remind us of that hope. But while we are here and we are mourning, God, will you comfort their hearts in the name of Jesus? Oh God, will you bring peace to their minds? Bring peace to their homes in the name of Jesus. Oh God, those, oh God, who are bombarded, I pray for deliverance in the name of Jesus. Will you break the strongholds that are over your people in the name of Jesus? We want to pull down every stronghold that will stand against your people. And we declare, oh God, that the word of God and the blood of Jesus is more powerful than any stronghold that will come against your people. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Father, will you move, oh God? Will you deliver your people? Will you just provide, oh God, for those that may need a job? Those that are in a difficult situation, God. Will you open a door for them in the name of Jesus? Oh God, will you deliver them, God? Provide the job. Provide the funds. Oh God, make a way, oh God. Release those papers, oh God, that are holding them back. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, where a lawyer might be sitting on, or a judge might be sitting on, release those papers in the name of Jesus, and let your people be able to move freely. Oh God, lifting up your name and giving you glory. Mighty God, there are many knees at the altars. I may not even know any of them, but you, oh God, you know each and every one in the name of Jesus. And so I ask, oh God, that you will touch your people, those that are in need themselves, those that are standing proxy for others those that are watching us online mighty God maybe on their job or just shutting in their homes God you see their needs will you strengthen them to continue to worship and to adore your holy name oh God give them strength for the journey pour out your anointing upon your people that we will continue to lift up your name and to give you thanks build up our faith oh God let us continue to believe and know that thus said God oh God when we decree a word oh God because you have given us the strength and you have given us the command it shall be so in the name of Jesus and so we call upon you because we know God you do not go back on your word and every promise that you make is true oh God you said you will be with us you will heal us you will deliver us you will sustain us you will keep us you will provide for us you will cover us in the mighty name of Jesus and your love oh God oh mighty God your love is so sure and so we can depend upon you Knowing, oh God, that we, you, oh God, will never let us down. We thank you and we praise you for this family this morning. We thank you and we praise you for each and every member that is here. And those that cannot make it, God, you see them, we know where they are. Oh God, there is no distance in prayer. And so we send our prayers to them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way in this service, mighty God. And let us continue to lift you up and give you thanks in advance of the healing. Thanks in advance of the deliverance. Thanks in advance for your provision. We give you praise and we give you glory, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Hallelujah.
can we stand to our feet and just give the Lord praise hallelujah hallelujah glory be to God forevermore hallelujah praise God That night when Christ was born. God bless you. Please be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Let me take this opportunity again to extend Christmas greetings to the household of faith. It is such a great privilege to be in the house of the Lord this morning to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. He came into the world, Paul said, to save sinners, of which I am chief. And I can say that with the Apostle Paul. Had it not been for the goodness of God, we would all be miserable people. But because of God's goodness and God's grace, we are able to celebrate his birth and to celebrate the great gift that God has given to us. God richly bless you to those who are online. We are happy for you. And it is such a good thing to praise and to worship the Lord. To our visitors, we are so happy that you are in the house this morning. If you are sitting beside one of those visitors, they stand earlier on, but maybe you don't remember. So let me ask all our visitors, could you stand again for us, please? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And I want our members to just remain standing for a while, please. I want our members to go and to shake their hands and to say how happy we are to have them this morning. Please move across and express our love towards them. Praise God. Praise God. Bless the Lord. Make sure you sh shake every hand, right? Bless the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And to all regular visitors and all members, we are so happy to have you. Just look beside, beside you and just say that to the person sitting next to you. Lord, just say that to the person. Bless the Lord. I'm happy to see you. Happy to see you. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to share a little on the Christmas story with you this morning from a portion in St. John chapter 1 and we'll be reading the New King James Version from verse 1 through to verse 13. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. 
he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to be a witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to be a witness of that light. That was the true light, which comes, or rather gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give thanks to you. Thank you for this new day. Thank you for this privilege to once more represent you to your people. May you bless me, O Lord, so that I will be a blessing and that your name will be glorified. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Receiving Christ at Christmas, or that great God's great act of grace, receiving Christ as Christmas. Christmas is dubbed as a season of goodwill. The idea comes from the hymn sung by the angels at the announcement of the birth of Christ. The multitude of angels praised God and said, Glory to God in the highest and on an earth peace and goodwill toward men. The goodwill toward men refers to here is the kindness of God expressed towards fallen humanity. The kindness of God expressed towards fallen humanity in the sending of his son, Jesus, into the world to redeemed man. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This great act, of God's grace, or rather this is a great act of God's grace. God the one who is offended or is sinned against gave his best gift for the good of the sinner, the most undeserving. So God, the one who is offended by our sins, gave his best gift for those who offended him. The Greek word, consider our Greek culture, consider a gracious act to be a good deed done for a friend without looking for anything in return. But Christ revolutionized this term by doing a good deed 
to his enemies, those who are least deserving, without looking back for anything in return. The incarnation is also God's great act of grace because it answers man's greatest need, his need for a redeemer. And it is the greatest expression of love and sacrifice. Jesus, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. But he made himself of no repetition, taking on the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of man. And being formed in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and have given him a name that is above every other name. That has the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Philippians 2. The timing of the incarnation is significant. Christ came after 400 years of silence. He came after that intertestamental period where there was no open vision or prophetic word from God. Spiritually, it was a time where man seemed to reach his end with no answer to the pains and the spiritual problem demise that he experienced. In the absence of a prophetic word, Israel's religion was primarily a scribal religion which interpreted the will of God strictly in terms of obedience to the law as interpreted by the scribes. There was no freshness or relevance to the message uh, that was presented. It was really a matter of tradition. The leaders or the leading religious groups, the scribes, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Herodians, the Zealots, the, the Essenes, made little impact on the spiritual and physical condition of the people and were for the most part at each other's throat. Consequently, brothers and sisters, there was a, a, a sense of hopelessness among the very poor and disenfranchised of the society. It was more uh, the less time for the longing for God to come out of silence and to speak to the conditions. It was a, a, a way that only could be done by God. It was time uh, of darkness trying to find solutions to their problems and directions for their troubled lives. It was such a world that Jesus came in. The prophet Isaiah tells us, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them has the light shined. Today, brothers and sisters, in some sense, today's world is no different from the world of Jesus' day. And at the same time, it is very much different. However, there was mixed reaction to the coming of Jesus. There is still longing for the real change to life's challenging problems. 
crimes and for crime and violence ah uh, this uh, the spiritual demise uh, of the larger part of the society the moral bankruptcy and darkness and sicknesses and disease uh, among other things still pervades our society the story of christmas is therefore relevant to our time however how does our world in general respond to God's great act of grace? How does our world respond to the coming of Christ at Christmas? How? How do they respond? How do you plan to respond to it? How do you respond? How do you plan to respond to God's great act of grace? How do you plan to respond to the coming of Jesus at Christmas? Whether the season brings you goodwill or means nothing at all depends on how you respond. Whether this season is going to bring joy and happiness. Whether you are going to experience the blessings of God. Or whether it is going to be nothing at all to you. Is really dependent on how you respond. To this offer of God's grace. God took on human flesh. Became like us in order to redeem us and to give us an inheritance in the kingdom of God. God's great act of grace is revealed to us. It's interesting to note how this is said. It's revealed in a number of ways. The word of God tells us in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. The great God of heaven stepped out and come into our space and he gave us a revelation of himself. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. So that word that was with God, that word that was God himself, the word of God tells us that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. We saw the glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. And he was full of grace and truth. He was the creator of all things. He revealed himself to us through the things that he had made. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament show it his handiwork. Day unto day they are uttering speech. And night unto night they are showing knowledge. There is no voice. There is nowhere in this vast universe where we are not touched uh, by the creative force of God. And it reveals to us uh, the God of heaven, the God of eternity, the God who was out there with the Father but made himself uh, available to us. So brothers and sisters, he revealed himself. Through the things uh, that he has made. He revealed himself. 
by coming himself into our space and by becoming like one of us. Uh, he put on human flesh and he walked where we, we are walking. He lived among us and he suffered the same kind of limitations that we suffer as a man. And he said that he came and it was in such a place, it was at such a time that we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. And then, brothers and sisters, he came, he revealed himself through his servant. So this morning, in our first service, Reverend Brown talked about how the, the angels responded. By, and how the shepherd responded by proclamation and worship. Do you follow what I'm saying? But here John proclaims uh, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The agency of the revelation was a divine and a human, has a divine and a human element. As uh, well as a special and natural statement. John the Baptist proclaimed the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. There was a man, the text says, sent from heaven whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness to the light that through him all might believe. Ah, and we find that in John 1, 6 and 7, John the Baptist proclaimed the coming of Jesus and bore witness to him when he came. When he saw Jesus, he said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. When he came on the scene, he said, Listen, I am he, the, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare he the way of the Lord. Make straight his path. So what we have here, brothers and sisters, is a revelation from God. Is God revealing himself. And he does it through various means. He does it divinely. Ah, by coming himself into the world he revealed himself through the creation and the things that he created and he revealed himself by the witness of John the Baptist and others so there was no doubt in people's mind as to who Jesus was because he declared it uh, by coming himself he declared it uh, by the creative things that he did and he declared it uh, by the witness of John the Baptist there was absolutely no doubt in man's mind about God and about the coming of Jesus and I want you to bear that in mind because it has some relevance to where we go from here. Uh, whenever uh, the, the president or anyone of high standing comes to any part of the, 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 the country, there is usually a proclamation before he comes. Somebody comes ahead and the secret service and others, they come before and they declare it. What Back in the islands, uh, where I have my origin, when dignitary come in the brown, the roads were prepared. Do you follow what I'm saying? You know that someone is coming and that's exactly what happened. The prophets declare it, that there was someone who was coming when John the Baptist came on the scene he proclaimed it and when Jesus came on the scene he proclaimed his coming to the world do you follow what I'm saying and so there was absolutely no reason for the people not to understand the people of Jesus' day knew that he was coming. They were not left in the dark concerning this great event that was about to take place. It was proclaimed ahead of time. Do you follow what I'm saying? That they could prepare themselves for it. Uh, they were told 
ahead of time so that they could put themselves in a position to see him. Uh, just like, uh, uh, what's the name of this? Zacchaeus. He heard that Jesus was coming. He heard ahead of time and he wanted to see Jesus. And so he put himself at a position that when Jesus passed by, uh, they would, he would be able to see him. Do you follow what I'm saying? And Jesus made all preparation that people could put themselves at a position that they would see him and that they would be able to embrace him as Lord and Savior of their lives. So they were told by the prophets and they were told by John the Baptist. Today we are in a better position than the people of Jesus' day. As it relates to his coming, we are able to look back at the event and learn from the countless saints who have believed on him and go on to benefit from his coming. Like John the Baptist, we are proclaiming today that God came into the world in the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, he comes to us uh, as an expression of God's grace to fallen humanity, whether this, seem, this season brings goodwill or whether it means nothing at all is dependent on how you respond. So we said that there is a divine element. And there is a human element. There could be no doubt. In the minds of the people of Jesus. Day, that he was among them. The holy scriptures testified of him. The prophets proclaimed his coming. And identified him. And Jesus himself revealed himself to them. Today is no different. We proclaim Jesus Christ. We are saying that Jesus Christ came into the world. And that he has come to set the captives free. He has come to free those who are bound and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The song says, oh, spread the tidings round. Wherever man is found, wherever human hearts and human woes abound, to every Christian tongue, proclaim the joyful song. The comforter has come. Do you follow what I'm saying? Go spread the tidings round. Wherever man is found, wherever human hearts and human woes abound, let every mortal man hear this message that the comforter has come the comforter has come the comforter has come hallelujah the comforter has come Jesus has come Jesus had been Revealed to the entire world. He was being proclaimed. Or is being proclaimed today. We need not continue in our sins. Or in sufferings without hope. There is rest and deliverance in him. He came to you. Whether this season means goodwill. Or whether it means nothing at all. Is dependent on how you respond. So there was a revelation of the word. But there is also in the text a reaction or a response to that divine revelation. There was a revelation and it was expressed through a divine means. And to our human agency. And how do we respond? When Jesus came into the world. He manifested himself to those. Who came. Who he came in contact with. However. 
different people reacted or responded differently to him. There were some individuals who rejected him and there were some individuals who received him. Whether this season means goodwill or whether it means nothing at all is dependent on how you respond. Whether you're going to leave this service feeling that you have met with God or whether you're going to leave just as you came is dependent on how you respond. The ball is in your court. <clears throat> Some reacted to the revelation by rejecting Jesus. So the scripture said, he came unto his own. And his own received him not. Remember now, you know. He revealed himself through the creation. He revealed himself by coming into the world and presented himself among them. He revealed himself through the weakness of John the Baptist and others and the prophets who proclaimed his coming before he came. But when he came on the scene and came to his own people, the word of God said, they receive him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. He came to his creation. He came to the things and the people that belonged to him. And they did not know him or recognize him. Very interesting. For he came unto his own. The Greek is his own things, his own creation. That which belongs to him. Can you imagine? You have a child. Huh? And you come to visit your child. And the child respond as if he or she don't know you. Or many of us, our origin is somewhere else. And you go back to your village or your community. Huh? And some of the very persons who you left there, when you go back to them, they believe, be, be respond as though what? They don't know you. Sad to say sometimes it is the other way around. <laughs> when we go back there, we be, behave like we don't know them. It's like the story that is told by Jesus about this king who called his servants together and set them over his possession. And he went away to war. And then he came back. And when he came back, they respond as though they never knew him. Never knew him. So when Jesus came, they did not, the scripture said they did not know him and they did not receive him. They saw him, but they did not recognize him for who he was. They saw him, but they did not know him. They knew about him. But they did not know him. They did not know his heart. They did not know his purpose for coming. 
They did not know that he was the son of God. They did not know that he was Emmanuel, God with us. So he went back home and they rubbed shoulder to shoulder with him. But they did not recognize him. Has it ever happened to you? Sometimes you go somewhere huh? and as I've said, it's the other way around to you know. You rub shoulder to shoulder with some persons <laughs> and you don't know them. You follow what I'm saying? Could have been from the long time that you have separated from them. But for whatever reason, you don't know them. They rub shoulder to shoulder with Jesus. He was locked up in some secluded place. He was out in the public every day. But they did not know him. They did not know him. His coming was proclaimed. He manifested himself to them in word and in deed, but they did not know him. They did not know him intimately. They did not know him neither as a servant nor as a friend. People today do not know Jesus. They hear so much about him. Maybe some of them have attended many Christmas service and many other services where Jesus is proclaimed, but they don't know him intimately. How this season, what this season means for you and for me is based on how you respond. Why is it that they did not know him? Irrespective of all the great length that he went to reveal himself to them. How come they did not know him? Why did they not receive him and recognize him as the son of God? They did not Receive him because they did not retain the memory of him huh? in their minds. They did not know and recognize him because what may be known of God is manifested to them. For the scripture said, for God has shown it to them since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that, that are made, even the eternal power of the Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew him, Scripture said, they did not glorify him as God, neither thankful, but became fruitile, are vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were dark, professing to be wise. They make fools of themselves, and they change the, the great glory of God into the corruptible means of man, and they serve the created things rather than the creator. According to Romans chapter 1 from verse 19. Like the seed which fell by the wayside. They allow the devil to steal it from them. Like the seed that fell among thorns. They allow the deceitfulness of riches and the pleasures of this world to choke the seed so that it becomes unproductive. Do you know Jesus? Have you benefited from its coming? Whether this season brings you goodwill or means nothing to you at all is dependent on how you respond. So they did not know him. 
Because they did not retain the knowledge of him in their heart. You know, like sometimes God speaks to us. And a short while after, a short while after, we forget everything that God said to us. Some of us, God speaks to us through dreams. We have some dreams, you know. And we are conscious that there is a divine side to it. You follow what I'm saying? But we do not retain and keep inside of us that which God has made known to us through vision and dreams. Some of us is like the spoken word. We hear it over and over and over again. Do you follow what I'm saying? But somehow we do not retain it in our minds. That was what happened to them. The prophets spoke of Jesus. John the Baptist spoke of Jesus. Jesus himself presented himself. And yet when he came, they did not know him. The rejection was also expressed in the fact that they did not receive him. They did not know him and they did not receive him. He came to his own and his own received him not. He came to his own people Israel. He came home and as a nation they did not receive him. They had the law, the prophets, and the Psalms. They had the mighty works of God. They had the priests and the prophets. They had the temple and the synagogue. They had the mighty works of God. And yet when Jesus came to them, they did not receive him. They had it. They looked at the other Gentiles, or rather the Gentiles, and saw them as heathens. Huh? Yes, because they did not, wasn't exposed to the law. Huh? They did not have the great prophets that Israel had. So they saw them as dogs, they classified them as. Outcasts, strangers to the commonwealth of Israel. And strangers to the covenant of prophets. But they had the prophets. They had the law. They had the priests. They had the temple. They had the synagogue. They had every reason. But when Jesus came, they did not know him. If we are not careful, you know, brothers and sisters. The same thing happened to us. Because when we talk about some people who are outside of God and Christ, we call them all kind of names. Call them sinners. What else we call them? All kind of names. We say they don't know God and they are heathen. Do you follow what I'm saying? And we are, if we are not careful, we end up just like the Jews. For we have the temple, we have the preachers, we have the word of God, and yet sometimes we don't know him. This truth, as I've said, is played out in Jesus' parable. The owner of the established men sent his son as the ear and say that he, 
and notice that he was rejected. Instead, according to the word of God, they killed the prophets who went ahead of them. And when they saw Jesus come, they said, this is the ear. Let us kill him. They would not receive him. They did not receive him because they did not retain the memory of him and what he represent in their minds. They did not recognize him. And so he, had, he was born in what? A manger. There was no room for him in the inn. And you know why? Because they did not recognize him. They did not know who he was. The shepherd knew. The wise men knew. But the people in general did not know who he was. They did not expect him. The reason they did not receive him is that they did not expect him to come in the way that he did. He locked worldly prompt and appeal. That's what Isaiah said, you know. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before us as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Sometimes we can be moved... <laughs> Be moved by personality and things, you know. And the very thing that we need to be moved by, we miss it. So the prophet said, he had no form or comeliness. He lacked worldly pomp and appeal. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty. As far as the human side is concerned, that we should desire him. He was not learned as the scribes. He was not considered to be uh, a lawyer, one who understood the law. Uh, as the scribe did. Do you follow what I'm saying? Uh, he was not in, found, found in the palace of the king. He was born in a manger. Do you follow what I'm saying? His closest friends uh, was not the elite of the day. It was some ordinary fishermen. Do you follow what I'm saying? He said birds have nests uh, and foxes have holes. Uh, but the son of man had no place to lay his head. And so when he came, they did not see the worldly prompt that they were looking for and so they did not respond to him as they should it's not worldly prompt you must look for it's not worldly prompt you must look for if you are looking for worldly prompt you will miss Jesus Oh, Lord. He lacked worldly prompt. Huh? The, the, the prophets in, the, in, in their prophecy concerning the coming of Jesus, the servant of the Lord, said that what? Who will believe this report? Who is the arm of the Lord revealed? He shall grow up before us as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. Parched ground. Dry ground. Can any good thing come? <laughs> when, can any good thing come? That was what uh, Nathaniel asked when he heard of Jesus. He said, can any good thing come? And they said, come and see. If you want to know if there any good thing can come, then come and see. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And you will say, blessed is the man who trusted in him. You can't stay outside and know him. You, you may know about him. You, you follow what I'm saying? You will miss him if you don't have an intimate relationship with him. Let me finish. 
have a little way to go, but but maybe we need to. They did not receive him because they were fascinated with the spectacular. And there was no beauty that we should desire him. Had Jesus come in a king's palace as the son of a high priest or the reigning high priest or some prominent Jewish family? Had he come as a mighty angelic or terrestrial being? Had he come with worldly pomp, he probably would have been received but not as a humble human being who lived and grew up among them. They did not understand him. Today's world is fascinated with outward beauty and worldly pomp. And so like the majority of the people of Jesus' day, they miss out on Jesus. They have missed him because they are looking for him in the beauties of the world and cannot find him because he is not there. It's like what happened when they went to the tomb to search for Jesus. And the angel said to them, who are you looking for? How come you're looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. You cannot find Jesus among the dead things of the world. Do you follow what I'm saying? If you want to find Jesus, you are going to find him somewhere else. So they didn't find him because they were searching for him in the wrong place. <laughs> Whether this season brings you goodwill or means nothing to you at all is dependent on how you respond. They did not receive Jesus because of their familiarity with him and out of envy and jealousy. What they said. Familiarity. What? Breeds contempt. So when Jesus on one occasion. After listening to Jesus. Jesus is teaching. The people were astonished. And said. Where did this man get. His wisdom. And these mighty works from. Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brother James, Simon, and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all among us? Huh? Where did this man get all these things? So they were offended by him. Huh? And Jesus responded by saying, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country and among his own people. Matthew 13, 54 going down. His own did not receive him. They came to his own. He came to his own people, the Jews. They did not receive him. He grew up among them. They did not receive him because they were jealous of him and eventually they crucified him. You know, there's a part of the story uh, about the, 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 the raising of Lazarus from the dead. That if you, when you read it, you know, you just see the jealousy and the wickedness in the heart of the people. They, when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, according to John, is it 11? Yes. And when they heard what Jesus did, they said, you know what? This is a great miracle. 
we cannot de deny it. And the other verse said, and they plotted how they might kill him. So they were so jealous of him. That when the miracle that should bring them back into fellowship with God. When they saw it, they said, boy, we can't deny this one now. So you know what we have to do? We have to find a way to kill him, to stop him. And Jesus' rejection was partly an account of jealousy and envy. I hope it is not once named among us. They did not receive him because of the spiritual blindness according to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Jesus came but they did not receive him. Huh? Because they were spiritually blind. They could not see the glory that is revealed in the face of Jesus Christ. Those of us who are part of this audience who have not received the Lord Jesus into your life. What is your reason for not doing so? Is your reason legitimate? Or is it action, your action out of what? Unbelief. Or maybe rebellion. Jesus is standing at your door and he's knocking. And he said, if you hear and open the door, I will come in and sup with you. I will come in and share fellowship and communion with you. But, brothers and sisters, all is not lost. Some did not receive him, but some did. But there was a revelation. There was a response to that revelation. And then there is a result of our positive response to it. So the Bible said, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Although most of the people of Jesus' day did not receive him, some did. As many as receive him, to them gave he power to become children of God. The reception of God's great act of grace is expressed in believing in him and receiving him. Some believed that he came to redeem them and to give them a better quality of life and they receive him into their lives. This was not a mere intellectual ascent. It involves uh, the appropriation or the applying of God's message to their heart. This belief, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, confidence in him, it is accepting Jesus and what he claims and dedicating one's life to him. So when he talk about them receiving him or believing on him, it was not just a matter of intellectual ascent. It was the fact that they accept the word and the message concerning him. They appropriate it to their lives and embrace him as their reason for living. You remember that little song? Jesus, my reason for living is the king of all kings I long 
to be his possession he is my everything can someone sing that song again Jesus my reason for living he the King of all kings. I long to be His possession. He is my everything. Can you testify? Turn to somebody beside you and say, Jesus, my reason for living. He is the King of all kings. He wants to be His possession. Oh, he is my everything. Can I ask you to do something? Just move out of your space and go to somebody and say, Jesus, my reason for living. He is the king of all kings. I want to be his possession. Oh, he is my everything. Oh, Jesus, my reason for living. The King of all kings. I want to be His possession. Oh, He is my everything. everybody. Please stand. Oh, Jesus. My reason for living. I would like to pray for someone this Christmas morning. The King of all kings. I want to be His possession. My everything. We're going to sing it again. The Spirit of the Lord wants us to stop right here. And to say to you who have listened to this word from the Lord today. This is a season of goodwill. This is a season that God has expressed his great act of grace but whether it is going to be of such to you or whether it is going to mean nothing at all just business as usual is dependent on how you respond we would like to pray for somebody this morning if you are in your seat and you would like for us to pray join my sister here and pray I'm going to ask you to come please come Jesus, my reason for living, He is the King of all kings. 
victories cause I need some altar workers please he is my everything oh Jesus my reason for living is the King of all kings. I want to be His cousin. Can you just come up a little closer that others can come? He is my everything. Oh, He is my reason for living. He is the King of all To be his possession, he is my everything. Oh, Jesus, my reason for living. Before I pray for you as I have promised, I just want to remind you, everybody at the altar, I'm speaking to these at the front, but I'm speaking to everybody, that Christmas is a season of goodwill. It's a time when God expressed his greatest act of grace towards humanity. And as we have read from the text, some, for some persons, it was business as usual. They did not receive him. But some did. And those who did, he gave them the right to be called or to refer to themselves as children of God. So my brother, my sisters who are at the front here and those who are at the altar, my brothers, just like I said in this message, whether this season is going to be a season of goodwill or it is going to be nothing at all, just business as usual, is really dependent on how we respond. If we respond to God by accepting his message of salvation, if we respond by believing on him and receiving him, there will be drastic change in our lives. We will have that right to refer to ourselves as children of God. So I am able to say that this morning, not because of any good thing that I have done, but because I heard that message of salvation and I have accepted the Lord Jesus. That's what I'm encouraging all of us to do. Let this Christmas be that one that you can look back on and say, this was the day when I received Jesus Christ into my life. This was the day that I truly can refer to myself as a child of God. Do you believe that this morning? Then if you believe that, just pray this prayer with me. And before you pray, let me tell you something said, with the heart man believe unto righteousness, 
but with the mouth, confession is made to salvation. So God wants us to say something to him and to express what is in our heart. And he said, if we confess, he will be faithful and just. In other words, he won't deceive you. Faithful and just to forgive you. Not for some things, but for everything. And to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So I want you to repeat this prayer with that in mind. That the God of heaven is hearing you. And he will be faithful and just to accept you as his child. To remove all the obstacles and to accept you as his child. Can we pray with me? Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you. I thank you for sending Jesus into this world to die for my sins. That through his death, I may be forgiven and accept you as my Lord and Savior. Today, Lord, I confess my sins. Forgive me of all sins. Blot out my transgression and accept me as your child. Help me, dear God, to believe your word that if I confess, you will be faithful and just to forgive me of all my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I confess today, Lord, fulfill your word in my life and make me your child in Jesus' name. Gracious loving Father, I give you thanks today for all my brothers and all my sisters your sons and your daughters that are standing at this altar. I commit each one into your hands. They have prayed, oh God, that sinner's prayer. They have confessed their sins. And I know, dear God, that you are not a man that you should lie. So I pray that as you forgive them, you will grant them the assurance of salvation. Oh God, that you have heard their cry, that you have fulfilled your promise Oh God, and you have accepted them as your sons and your daughters. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We pray that you will go ahead of them and make the path straight before them. Lord, if there are other challenges in their homes, oh God, or wherever they are from, I pray that you will go ahead. Make the crooked path straight, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Turn things around for them. Turn things around for them. Let this season be a season of goodwill in their hearts and in their lives. To the glory of God the Father. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And we thank you for these mercies. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. One more thing. One more thing. If you are at this altar for the first time, we're asking you, please. We're going to ask some counselor to just take your name and your address or your phone number. And the reason is that we want to call you. Right? We want to call you. We want, when we're praying for you, what's your name? Ramona. We want to say, Lord, remember Ramona. And we are specific. You know, we are just saying, Lord, remember those who came to the altar. No, we are saying, remember Ramona. You follow what I'm saying? And so we're asking you, please, give your names to them and your telephone number. And when we call, answer the call, right? When we call, just answer the call, right? And we are going to respond to you, all right? God richly bless you. See that little door there? Yes, I want you to just go through that little door there. And someone is going to meet you there and is going to take your name and your number. Take, come, Sister Bishop. All right. Bless you. Bless you. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I commit this young lady into your hands. I pray that you will break every bondage, every oppressive force in the name of Jesus. I cancel every work of the adversary in the name of Jesus. And I declare your deliverance over her life now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. Praise God. Remember now, just take them to that corner there and take their names. Go ahead, my sister, and give us the announcement. Pleasant good afternoon. Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, I bring you good tidings of great joy in that of the church's announcement on today, Christmas Sunday. Um, I need you to bear in mind um, for next Sunday, New Year's Eve, and um, December 31st and January 7th, there will be two services, 8 a.m. and uh, 10 a.m. Service will begin at 8 a.m and 10 a.m. There will be no Sunday school. That will be for December 31st and January 7th only. That's New Year's Eve Sunday and New Year's Sunday. As for today, um, there will be a Christmas Eve service tonight at 10 p.m. All are invited. There will be no My Sister's Keepers meeting for this month. However, there will be a special meeting via Zoom on Thursday, January 4th. Um, more details will be coming via the uh, My Sisters Keepers uh, group chat. In observance of the Christmas holiday, the pantry will be closed on Wednesday, December 27th, and will reopen on December 30th. Please note that the pantry will also be closed when there is inclement weather, and also when supplies for that day is done. We thank you for your understanding. On next, um, actually on New Year's Eve, our watch night service, which will be next week, Sunday, December 31st, service begins at 9 p.m. and there will be water baptism. If you would like to be a candidate for water baptism, please contact the office as soon as possible. If you know someone that wants to be a candidate for water baptism, the phone number to call is 718-652-0337. Uh, Sister Horten Smith is asking for all seniors 75 years and older 70 years old and older to meet her in the foyer after service on your way out. Only if you're 70 <laughs> and older. Now, <laughs> moving along. Um, beginning January 7th to the 28th, of 2024, we will start our 21-day fasting. So the Bronxwood International Church of God 21-day fasting begins on January 7th, and it will run through to January 28th. Um, a booklet should be coming your way very soon, and that booklet will entail every little detail that you will need, scripture, devotionals, instructions, everything that you need to guide you along this 21 day of fasting. <clears throat> the 2024 District 20 Women's Retreat will be held at Blue Mountain Christian Retreat Center on May 31st through June 2nd of 2024. The cost is $300. And for further information, please see Sister, um, please see Reverend Quarry. So that's for the 2024 District uh, 20 Women's Retreat. 
on January 19th, there will be a district prayer vigil and more information will be coming on that. And it seems like the uh, trip to Dubai and Israel, February 19th to March 1st, is still on. It's, oh, it's not Dubai anymore? We're going to Italy? Florence, Italy? Either way, we're flying out. So <laughs> February 19th to March 1st, our trip across the pond is still going on right? Okay. Now, I know that it's the end of the year, and so the new year is coming up, and we like to do new things, and we like to invite, you know, the spirit into our home. So our church does have a program where we rededicate our homes. So if you're interested in rededicating your home and your family, we're asking that you contact Reverend Erica Ricketts or Brother Denton Ricketts and their team so that someone can come out to your home, Pray for your home, pray for your family, just, you know, invoke the spirit inside your home. And we can just start the new year fresh and good and fine and everything set up nice, right? Okay, I think those are all, <laughs> those are all the announcements. Um, if for any reason you've missed anything, please visit our website at www.bicog.org or any of our social media platforms, or you can call the office at 718-652-0337. Or if you see me, you could run up on me, ask me, I'll tell you. Thank you, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I won't see you until three weeks time. Bless the Lord, if you're clapping, Sidney, please do it better than that. Bless the Lord. There are two things I would like to say. One is to clarify that part regarding the trip. The Israel side of it is canceled, but they'll be going to Dubai and Italy for those, yeah, Florence, Rome, for those who are interested, it is still open. You can make contact, all right? So the Israel side of it is canceled. But the trip will be going Dubai and Italy. So Rome and Florence, those are the areas in Italy where we will be going. The second thing I would like to say is that I would like to meet all our members. It shouldn't take more than five minutes. If it's more than five minutes, then it is you who decide to keep us that long. So I want to meet you for just five minutes after church. Five minutes after church. So after you have worshipped the Lord with your tithes and your offering, I want you to just go right around and take your seat. And pastor will talk with you for how many minutes? Five, five minutes, right? And then we will be all right. Amen? Right, Reverend Ricketts? Five minutes. All right. Now... God has been gracious to us, and he has given to us. And we have come to worship him. We read in scripture that the wise men who traveled from the east, and they came and they worshipped the Lord. But they worshipped the Lord in giving him their gifts. And today we want to worship the Lord in giving him our gifts. We always say that worship doesn't take place unless we give something. Either give ourselves, first of all. We give up our, our abilities and our gifts and whatever God has blessed you with. You use that to worship. So I said everybody can worship the Lord. Everybody can give to the Lord. Because guess what happened? You give to the Lord out of that which he has blessed you with. You give to the Lord what? Out of that which he has blessed you with. So whatever it is that the Lord has blessed you with, you can dedicate that to the Lord. He will accept it and he will reward you accordingly. Paul tells us that when we are giving to the Lord, 
we should be mindful of some things. We should be mindful of the fact that God loves a cheerful giver. And so whatever we are giving to the Lord, we must be comfortable with it. Right? We don't give grudgingly, but we give willingly from our hearts because God loves a cheerful giver. Secondly, Paul said we worship God according to our ability or how the Lord prospers us. How the Lord prospers us. Right? So he said to whom much is given, much is required. So it must be reflected in the way that we worship God. And thirdly, he says, if we sow sparingly, we will reap what? Sparingly. And if we sow bountifully, we will reap how? Bountifully. So the ball is in your court again. Depending on the kind of harvest that you need from the Lord, let your giving reflect that. Could we stand? Gracious Father, we give you thanks that you have poured into our lives. We learn, O oh God, from your word that it is you who gives us the power to gain wealth. We learn, Lord, that we plant and we water, but it is you who cause things to grow. So we are aware of the fact today, Lord, that we are where we are in life because of you and because of your blessing on our lives. Lord, we now bring our tithes and our offering to give to you because your word declares, O oh God, that if we bring the tithes and the offering into your house so that there will be meat, then you will open the windows of heaven and you will pour us out blessings that we do not have room to store. May you accept the gifts that we bring today, O oh God, and may your word be fulfilled in the lives of your people. I now declare these gifts that we are about to give, bless and consecrate it for holy use. And we give you praise, glory and honor for these mercies we ask in Jesus' name. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you. May the Lord our God grant you his peace, even now and forever. Let the people of God say, Amen. Remember all members, I need to talk to you. So just come back to your seat. God bless you. The praise team will lead us. Joy brings, won't you listen to the angels sing? 